Hey guys, welcome to your fourth Godot tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to cover signals and slots. And in the process, we're going to learn about timers, uh, just because uh, we're going to use it as an example of explaining signals and slots. So a signal is basically an event that can occur. Uh, when this event occurs, we say that the signal is emitted. A slot is a callback method that gets executed when a signal is emitted. So it's literally just a method, and, and this method will get executed whenever the signal is emitted. You connect a signal to a slot. When the signal is emitted, then the slot is called. The slot is called because it is a method. This is basically Godot's implementation of the observer pattern. Uh, there are lots of built-in signals, so most of the built-in nodes have a lot of signals that uh, get emitted when interesting things happen to the nodes. But you can also create your own signals. So now what I'm going to do is create a little Godot game, <laughs> I guess if you can call it that. It'll just be a little sprite and it, we're going to use a timer to move, uh, basically to move this sprite around randomly every one second. Okay, so let's create a new folder for our new project. I'm just going to call it tutorial 4. Let's launch Godot. Click on new project, choose a name for it, tutorial 4, and the path to our folder, create and edit. Okay, so we're in our empty scene here, I'm going to create a root node, I'm going to add a root node, and I'm just going to make it a sprite, which we've been using, and again, the sprite node is useful for when you just want to display an image on the screen. So that's the only node that we have in our unsaved scene. And one of the properties of the sprite node is this texture property, which is basically what image you want it to display. So as soon as I drag this right on here, you see that that is the image that this sprite node displays. Let's just move it here for now. Now we're going to add a child to this node, so right click add child node and search for timer. And we're going to add a timer node. So, really quickly, let me cover what uh, you would use a timer node for. So, a timer node you can use it to do things periodically. So, let's say you want to do something every four seconds, or you can do it, you can use it to do something once but at some point in the future. So, let's say that you want to do something. Uh, 10 seconds in the future and you only want to do it once. So those are the two use cases for the timer. So add a timer, okay. Um, and just to reiterate what I stated in previous tutorials, which is what you're seeing here is a hierarchical representation of what you have in your scene. And here the text sprite, that's the name of the node. The text timer, that's the name of the node. In this case, the name of the node happens to be the same as the type of the node because the type of this node is also a sprite and the type of this node is a timer. I, I know some people who get confused about this, so I'm going to rename this just to prove my point. I'm going to call this, uh, I'll just call it GD guy, standing for Godot guy because that's the little Godot guy, I guess. And then the timer, I'm going to rename it, uh, I don't know. Um, clock okay just so you know so the name of this node is clock what is its type it's a timer the name of this node is GD guy what is its type it's a sprite GD guy uh, node is the root node in this unsaved scene clock is a child node of this uh, GD guy node uh, I'm basically reusing this terminology so that it sinks in in your head because uh, this is uh, this is how you'll see stuff in the Godot documentation. Okay, so we got this. Now add a script to GD guy. Attach script. Uh, make sure you choose C sharp. And we're just going to save it in the root pro root of our folder and we're going to call the script GD guy dot C sharp. Okay, I like using VS Code to do my editing, so I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to launch Visual Studio Code, drag it here, and let's see, put your folder in it, 
open up GD guy exit this little update just to refresh um, our memory as to what our goal is we want this uh, little GD guy node to keep on moving around randomly and we're gonna use the clocks timeout signal which is emitted every once in a while you can choose that number how often you want it to be emitted and uh, we're basically gonna attach a function to that signal and then our function will get called uh, whenever the timeout signal gets emitted let me show you in practice so we'll go back to our code here okay so first of all we want to get a reference to that timer so uh, let's do it right here so in the ready method of our GD guy um, so in, in remember just another refresher I'll probably stop restating this in future tutorials but in the first couple maybe first five I will keep on saying things over and over so it sinks in uh, the ready method of a node is called as soon as that node enters the tree okay the process method is called every frame okay so as soon as this node enters the tree we want to get a reference to the timer because remember it has a timer child so we're gonna do remember the get node method let me just do this dot get node so the get node method takes as an argument the name basically of a child node or you can uh, put the path of a child node so here the name of our child is clock okay and in brackets you put the type the type is timer all right so we grab the timer and the timer has a signal called timeout that gets executed every uh, couple of seconds that couple of uh, seconds is configurable so first what we're going to do is configure that right timer that wait time this is what determines uh, how long it'll wait before emitting that signal we're going to make it one second so every second we want it to emit its timeout signal well how do we connect something to the timeout signal timer dot connect and then here you put a string with uh, the signal name the signal name is called timeout how did I find that out well just open up your web browser and if you just go the uh, timer go to the class def the class documentation and right here it shows you the properties and some methods and also signals the timeout signal is emitted when the timer reaches zero that's what we're interested in okay so the timeout signal uh, the target object so what object has the slot which is just the method that we want called so we're gonna make the target object this and then the actual method I'll say on time out. okay so now whenever the timers timeout signal gets emitted it will get emitted every one second we're gonna call a method on this object the name of that method is called on timeout now we have not defined this method so let's define it void on timeout okay now signals can also uh, pass parameters um, but this particular signal doesn't pass any parameters so in my uh, slot in my callback method I'm not gonna declare any parameters how do I know that the timeout signal does not pass any parameters well once again if you look at that same documentation page that I showed you um, you'll see that it has no parameters in it okay so this function will get executed when the timeout signal of the timer is emitted and what do we want to do we want to move the little Godot guy randomly so we're gonna get a random X we'll use uh, gd.rand range and again this function you can use to get a random uh, basically double uh, to get a random decimal from some start to some end so we're gonna make it I don't know zero to maybe 500 okay and I just have to cast that to a float 
and we're going to do random y similarly. 0 to 500. Okay. Now we want to set the position of this guy to that. All right. And that's it. Now, one more thing we have to do is we have to actually start the timer. If we don't start it, we'll never stop, uh, start counting down. Okay, let's see this and make sure we save our script. And let's go ahead and launch our scene. It'll ask us to save it. I'm just going to save it as gdguy.tscn. And again, remember, I will review this once more. The TSCN is the extension for scenes. This is the name of the scene. And res is the root of your project folder, that empty folder that we created in the beginning of this tutorial. So we want to save it in our root and we want to name it this. Simple. And there we go. Every one second, uh, this little GD guy bounces around. Okay, so that is how you connect a slot, uh, in other words, a uh, method to a signal. But we didn't actually create our own signal. So how do we create our own signal? Well, let me show you. So right over here, um, we're going to create a signal for our GD guy. Um, and this is going to be a very useless looking signal, but it just demonstrates to you how to create it, okay? So all you're going to do is create a delegate with the signature of the signal. So I'm going to do something like public uh, delegate void. Um, all the signals that I've seen return void. So I, I don't think you can return anything else, but I might be wrong on that. So the name of the signal and then any parameters. So signal parameters. If you wanted your signal to pass any parameters. But I'm not going to make it pass any parameters. Um, Actually, I will make it past parameters because if you can do signals with parameters, then you can easily do signals without parameters. So I'm going to call this signal moved, right? And it's going to pass you two parameters, an X, a new X, and a new Y. So this moved signal is emitted whenever the little GD guy moves and he tells you the new X position that he moved to and the new Y position that he moved to. That's the idea. So this is how you... Uh, this is the signature for the uh, signal, right? To make it officially a signal, all you have to do is add the signal attribute right above it, like that. So now we have defined our own signal. Well, how do you emit the signal? Okay, so here, every time we move, we're going to call the emit signal method and then just pass in the, uh, basically the name of the signal as a string. And here you can uh, pass in the arguments. So we know our moved signal has two arguments, an X and a Y. So the position that he moved to, that's what we're going to pass in. Okay, and it's as easy as that. So now another client, so somebody else, can basically connect to, uh, to the GD guys moved signal and respond to it just like we connected to the timers timeout signal and responded to it to demonstrate that really quickly over here i will have the gd guy connect to his own signal so we're going to do this that connect uh what's the name of the signal um moved and the target we're going to make himself what's the name of the method or the slot that gets called uh, on moved okay so let's create that on move function on move. It takes, remember now, the move signal has two parameters. So we have to put it in our slot as well. What do we want to do? Well, for now, I'll just do print. Uh, I'm just going to print that we moved. And let's go ahead. I'm not going to use these, but you can take my word that these are passed in. Okay, let's launch the scene again and keep an eye at that little output here. See, now every time we move, that we moved uh, code gets executed.
So now let's do a quick recap of the main concepts and API that we learned here. Okay, so as we said, a signal is just an event that can occur. We say when that event occurs, we say that the signal is emitted. A slot is simply a method, but this method is connected to a signal. So that when the signal is emitted, the slot is called, so the method is called. To connect a slot, which is just a method, to a signal, you, do, you call the connect method of the signaling object. So you do the signaling object dot connect. The first parameter is the name of the signal. The second parameter is the target object, meaning the object who has the method that you want to connect to the signal. To emit a signal, you do emitting object dot emit signal, and the argument is the name of the signal, and any arguments that you want to, uh, that the signal passes. To define a custom signal, it's a two-step process. You create a delegate with this kind of a general signature, so public delegate void, uh, the name of the signal, and any arguments that the signal passes, and then you simply put the signal attribute right above it. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.